This video will show you how to create an interactive slideshow in a presentation that you are showing to an audience. This interactive piece could be in the form of a quiz, of a game show, or anything that you can imagine. Here is an example of an interactive slideshow. I might have a question like how many bones there are in the human body. Now my audience would have the option to choose between the different possible answers. And if they choose a wrong answer, it would take them to the screen that says, sorry, wrong answer, try again. I'd be able to navigate back to the original question, try another answer, that's not right, I'm going to go back again, and finally if I choose the correct answer, it will tell me, yes, this is the correct answer, move on to the next question, and allows me to move on to the next question, and so on. There's many different ways you can play with this, but understanding the basic structure of how to create an interactive piece to your slideshow will make any slideshow much more engaging and fun for your audience. So let's get started. To get started, we'll need to go over the basics of the software program you'll be using to create your slideshow. For this purpose, we will be using Keynote to create our slideshow. Although the interactive component of what we're going to learn here could be used with other slideshow programs. So if you already are pretty familiar with Keynote and how it works, you can go ahead and skip step one and move on to step two. The first thing you should know about Keynote is how the slides work and how you can create new slides. So over here, you see a whole collection of slides that I've created. Up here, we have a little plus button and that allows me to add a new slide. When I want to play my slideshow, I just click on the place I want to start and I can hit play. Hit escape to get out of there. So there's also some options of how your slides can look. Up here we have uh, a bunch of themes. So I can actually create a slideshow and at any time decide to change my theme. There's lots of different options here and at any time you want you can change it. And in fact when you start a new keynote program you'll typically get something like this that opens up with what they call the theme chooser. So you'll be able to choose the size of your slide and also what the slide's going to look like. The next thing you need to know about is called the format bar. And the format bar is placed right here. And right now you'll notice that it's grayed out, meaning I can't select anything. Because the word format means to change. So if I want to change something on the slide, I first have to select it. So it might be a box, it might be an image, or it might be writing. So if there's something that you want to format or change, you have to select it first. Now that I've selected this, it now allows me to choose from a whole bunch of different things that I can do. If for some reason this format bar is not showing, come here to view, and also you'll notice some other ways you can view your slides. You can come down here to hide or show format bar. So if you click that, it disappears or you can come down and make sure it's showing. So here I can change my fonts. I can change the weight of that font. I can change the font size here. And if there's not a size you want, you can go to what's called the font panel. And that opens up a window that allows you to choose from different font styles, different typefaces, different sizes that you can manually type in. Also, it allows you to add in things like underline, um, color and some other things. There's a little button here that if you press it you can pull down and get a closer look at how your writing's going to look. There's also an option here to let you create a color scheme for the background of your writing too. So that's an option. But if you don't want any of that you can always just take it off. Getting back to the format bar this allows you to change the color of whatever you've highlighted. So if you wanted to change the color of a font or if you want to change the color of an object, that's what you would do here. Next, you have the option for bold, italics, or underline. This allows you to play with your alignments. And this area here is for the spacing between each line of text. If you would like to create columns, that allows you to do this. And this allows you to choose um, 
basically what your lines look like. And this is really only pertinent if you're using lines, underlines, shapes, text boxes, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. So, last but not least, as we come down the side here, this is a fill option that allows you to fill in, again, your background. The text box is a very important tool that you're going to need to know how to use in any slideshow program. Essentially, slideshow programs don't let you just type randomly anywhere you want on the screen. It's not like a regular document. You have to type within a box, which is called a text box. So the cool thing about a text box is it does allow you to move your text wherever you want on the screen. So you can line that up where you want to have it look the way you want. When you create a new slide, so let's do that now, and you can double click to type whatever it is you want to type. But what if for some reason you don't like the way they've set up these text boxes or they're gone. In order to create a new text box, you just come up here. This icon, the white box with the letter T, is for text box. You click that and you will literally get a little box that says text. Now be careful, if you leave this, it will say text on your slideshow. So you have to make sure that if you create a text box, you either click on it and delete it, or you highlight and you type whatever it is you want to say. Now with this text box, as I showed you earlier, you can then go to the format bar and start to format how the text looks and the size and shape, and again, move it wherever you want it to go on your screen. The next thing you're going to need to know to do your interactive presentation is shapes. Shapes is one of the options next to the text box. And essentially, this allows you to choose from a selection of different shapes. And the bottom one allows you to create your own shape. So just basic things that you might want to use in a slideshow might be an arrow. So if you click on that, you'll get your arrow here, and it will allow you to change the direction change its size, move it around. Now you'll also notice that when your shape is selected, the format bar has changed. So now I can change how my shape looks. I can change the writing style. I can change the thickness of the line. I can change color of the line. I can also change what its endpoint looks like. So you can play around a little bit with this as well, depending on how you want to make your shape look. Um, also, if I wanted to make this double-sided, at least for arrows, it gives you that option. And then opacity is talking about transparency. So if I wanted to, I could make this a little bit transparent just to give it a certain look if that's what I wanted. I also can choose an option for shadow and for a reflection. And if I make this a little bit more opaque, you'll get a better idea of how that looks. So shapes can be very helpful. There's actually quite a few here. Of course, just basic lines. Also boxes and things like that. So if I were to choose, maybe I'll do a callout box here. So I've got this callout. The white box on the side allows me to change its size and the blue allows me to actually physically change what this shape looks like. So you can kind of alter this as you want it. The other thing is that you can type inside. It has the colors set up for you, but if you wanted to change the colors, again, you just select it, and then you'll go to your format bar, and to change the background, that's the fill area, so I can change this to have a different color fill. I can also give it a border if I wanted to. And there's quite a few other things here you can mess with. Also, just like anything else, you can change the font style, size, whatever, of your writing inside of that shape. The inspector is located up here, the top right corner. The inspector is essentially where all of your different options and menus are hidden. So all you have to do is click on this icon and you will get what's called the inspector window. And if you'll notice, there are lots of different little icons 
up at the top area of the inspector. So essentially each one of these controls a different aspect of your slideshow. Now I could get into each one of these but it would take quite a while. So we're going to get into some specific parts of the inspector that we would be using to create our interactive slideshow. The graphic inspector deals with graphics. So this is photographs, pictures, images, or shapes. So to make it easy, let's go ahead and create a shape. So here is a shape. We can type inside of it, or maybe it's just an element to our slideshow design. You'll need to select the image or shape, and now here in the graphic inspector, we can do things like a gradient fill. And a gradient fill is essentially two colors mixed together. So these are two shades of blue, but maybe I want it to be two shades of green. Um, you can also just do a plain color fill, one color, an advanced gradient fill, or an image fill. And an image fill is kind of interesting. It will allow you to search your computer for an image and will fill that shape with it. So you can just put a picture on the side, but this would maybe allow you to have it inside of a shape. So this is inside of a circle. It's not looking quite right. This section here allows me to choose some different options to make it fit just right within that shape. So actually, to me, this probably looks the best. So now I have my shape. This one has an image fill, and I can then go down to the section called stroke, and that's talking about the line. So that might be another way to say a border. So if I wanted to have a border and maybe I wanted a certain color with that border, I could add that in. You can do different border styles, colors, and thickness as well. Down here you have an option for shadow which is a little bit hard to see here when it's black on black, so you could even change the color of your shadow if you wanted to. You can also add in a reflection, and again, opacity is talking about transparency. So if I wanted this to be kind of a background or overlapping in some way, I might want that a little bit transparent. The metrics inspector essentially allows us to get into how images look on the screen. So if I were to bring a image in, the metrics inspector allows me to play around with its size. You can also go back to the original size if you messed with it so much that you forgot what it was supposed to look like at the beginning. It allows you to play around with positioning if you need it in a very specific place. It also allows you to rotate. And that's actually one of the things that I use the metrics inspector for probably the most is the rotation abilities or to flip it. The last term we're going to need to know and possibly the most important for this interactive project is the hyperlink inspector. So here in inspector, the hyperlink is the second to last icon and a hyperlink is essentially creating a link from a word or an image to another place. This is how websites function. So if you have either the text box selected, a word selected, or maybe a shape selected, that will become the link itself. So select what you want to be linked, then it will let you enable as a hyperlink. So click that, check. Now it gives you some options. You can either link to a slide, another slide within your slideshow, which is what you'll be doing to create this interactive tool. So you can choose what slide it will jump to when I click this box, or I could choose to link to a web page, another keynote slideshow, an email message, or I could make this the link to end my slideshow completely. And if you were to use this as a web page link, all you need to do is select that option, copy and paste or type in your website link, and it will display whatever you've selected. Step two, setting up your slides for an interactive slideshow. In order to make an interactive quiz using Keynote, you have to remember this one rule. For every question, you need three slides. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is create three slides. The first slide will be my question. 
Now let's say for my project I decided to do an interactive slideshow based on the most poisonous animals in the world. Once my slideshow is over, I wanted to quiz my audience as to the content of the slideshow itself. Now I have to give some possible answers. I'm going to make a separate text box for each possible answer. So my first one might be a king cobra. Maybe my next one is a box jellyfish. And my last one is a poison arrow frog. All right. So the correct answer is the poison arrow frog. So maybe I'll stick that one as option C and line these guys up. So now I've got my three options. The next step will be to create the yes and no, right or wrong answer slides. So I'm going to make slide two be, sorry, you got the wrong answer. Now I might want to add in a graphic to help support this statement. So in this case, I've already pre-selected my unhappy option, and maybe I'll bold this out to really make it pop. And last but not least, I'm going to need some kind of navigation to go with this. So I'm going to create another text box and say, click to try again. And I will bring in an arrow for them to click to try again. But I think I want this arrow pointing the other direction. So we're going to go to the inspector. And inside of inspector, I'm going to go to the metrics inspector and come down here to flip. So it's pointing back. And I think I'm going to also go into the graphic inspector and change the color of this. So quickly. I will choose a new color and let's see how that looks. All right, so we'll go on to slide three and I think I'm just gonna delete all these out and we're gonna add in a text box saying yes. Yes, you're a genius. And add in my corresponding thumbs up. And last but not least, I will need some navigation to go with this. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I think I'll add in a thick arrow and another text box saying click to move on. So now I have my basic slide framework set up for this one question. Step three, creating hyperlinks within your slideshow to make it truly interactive. Now we need to insert our hyperlinks to make this slideshow truly interactive. To get started, we'll be on our question page and select one of the possible answers. You can either select the text box or you can select the text itself, one specific part of text, whatever you want. We're gonna open up Inspector and we will go to the hyperlink inspector. So remember, you do have to have something selected before it will let you hyperlink. So I'm going to say yes, enable as a hyperlink. I want to hyperlink to a slide. And what slide do I want to hyperlink to? Well, in this case, King Cobra is wrong. And I know that slide two is my wrong answer slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip to slide two. This one I will also enable to slide two. And the last one I know is the correct answer that will go to slide three. So these are all hyperlinked. I can see that, but I can't actually check that the links work and where they go until I'm playing my slideshow. Let me go ahead and move on to slide two. I need this to link back to the original slide so they can try again. I want to actually highlight both of these so people know either one will let them link. 
So I'm going to say enable as hyperlink and we're going to go to slide one so they can try again. And we'll go back here and this will let us move on to the next slide. Next slide. I haven't created it yet, but that's where we want this to go. Now we'll go back to slide one and play it and make sure it works. So King Cobra should take me to, yes, sorry, try again. Fox Jellyfish, nope, sorry, try again. Finally, Poison Arrow Frog, yes, got it. Moving on to the next slide. Perfect. The final step in this guide is your task. You will be asked to do three things. First, you will be asked to create an educational slideshow based off of any topic of your choosing. Next, your slideshow does need to teach your audience about something. And finally, your slideshow needs to have some kind of interactive component. Now this can be anything from a quiz to a game show to whatever you can imagine. I'm very interested to see what you're going to create now that you have some new skills in creating an interactive slideshow. Have fun and good luck. Thanks for watching.